Education Assistant for the First Unitarian Church of Salt Lake City. Our UU of the week, and perhaps every week, is Ralph Waldo Emerson. No UU of the week collection could be complete without Emerson. And kids, I know we have talked a lot about him, but as luck would have it, there's a lot to say about Ralph Waldo Emerson and his impact on Unitarian Universalists. He was known as Waldo to his friends, but Mr. Emerson to everyone else. And he was born in Boston, Massachusetts in 1803. His father was a Unitarian minister, but he died when Emerson was only eight years old. His mother struggled to make ends meet, so Emerson learned at an early age to make do with less. But his mother always worked hard to support her eight children, five of whom survived to adulthood. Emerson's aunt also lived with them to help with the children. Waldo and his aunt Mary Moody Emerson were very close and wrote letters to each other for the rest of her life. Emerson lost a lot of people in his life, in addition to his father and three siblings, two more of his brothers died of typhoid in their 30s. And Emerson also lost his first wife to typhoid less than two years after they were married. He did marry again and had four children, but one of his sons died, this time of scarlet fever. But all of this loss instilled in him an intense respect for love and for life. Emerson was a Unitarian minister for like one day. That's not true. It was more like three years, but he did not agree with the traditions he was bound to like serving communion or public prayer. Remember the Unitarian Church of the 1800s was based in Christianity. They were still dissenters in the sense that they did not believe in the Trinity, hence the name Unitarian or one God so Unitarians were still quite different from other Christian churches of the time, but they were much more traditional by our modern standards. Christian teachings are still part of our foundation and are one of our six sources of spiritual inspiration. But over time, our church moved away from dogma or rules from the Bible toward a more individual pursuit of truth. But back in the 1800s, Emerson would reference the Bible, but not preach from it. This was a big change, and those higher up in church leadership did not like it. But the people did. Membership at the Second Unitarian Church of Boston, where Ralph Waldo Emerson was the head minister, rose during his short time there. But when Emerson began to doubt his beliefs after his first wife died, Combined with his earlier distaste for the rules he was bound to, he soon left the ministry. Emerson decided that he could better explore his faith as an academic and a lecturer, and he left on a tour of Europe. It was in France, at a meticulously curated garden, that Emerson first saw the interconnectedness of life. In fact, Nature defined Emerson's spiritual experience. He believed that anyone could come to understand God and that the way to directly experience the divine was through nature. These beliefs that any person could find something sacred inside themselves and that after finding that spark of divinity, it was possible to have a direct transcendent experience of the holy became the cornerstone of the Transcendentalist movement and later were Emerson's greatest spiritual contribution to Unitarian Universalism. The ideals that Emerson wrote and lectured about later in his life are much more evident in the principles we uphold today compared to the Unitarian Church that Emerson left in 1832. Emerson made his living as an author and a lecturer. He was very popular and traveled across the country on speaking tours. He even returned to his alma mater, Harvard Divinity, and spoke to the graduating class of 1838, where he delivered what came to be known as the Divinity School Address. Emerson shared his beliefs that while Jesus was a great man, he was not 
God. This statement ruffled more than a few feathers, and he was not invited back to Harvard for 30 years. Emerson started the Transcendental Club, where he met with many people, but among them, UU of the Week alums like his close friend and mentee, Henry David Thoreau, Theodore Parker, and James Freeman Clark. After about a year of meeting, Emerson decided to open the club up to women, and he invited Margaret Fuller to join. Out of these regular meetings of about 20 people, Transcendentalism arose. It was among the first truly American philosophies, focusing on the inherent goodness of people and nature and the importance of self-reliance. Emerson agitated the Unitarian belief structure, creating a new philosophy which shaped the Unitarian Universalist church we know today. He lived with integrity in the face of challenge and sadness and he inspired and united some of the greatest minds in American and Unitarian history. He said, to be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else is the greatest accomplishment. Thanks for learning about Ralph Waldo Emerson, and remember to join us again next week for Reimagining Chapel. Thank you.